Welcome to the Week in Italian Startup, where we discuss the latest highlights happening in the Italian tech and investment ecosystem. Interesting week before the uh, summer closing for Italy. So, Bending Spoons announced the acquisition of WeTransfer. This caught everyone by surprise. What is your first take on this one, Nick? Oh, well, yeah, I was like, well, okay, another one. Ah, uh, boring. So, I mean, no, not really. <laughs> uh, no, not really, not really. Um, I think on the, we transfer was not my bingo card, but it, it should have been. Uh, as, as you probably said, we, we, we were having a conversation with, with Jack. And it was like, okay, they're acquiring the tools of our, you know, uh, of our university years, basically. So yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> our younghood. Um, yeah. So I wonder what's what's next, but for sure, yeah, they are doing um, crazy acquisitions, acquiring millions of customers, or expanding the customer base in a very sensitive way. Uh, the thing we transfer and also very good numbers. Of yeah, I was checking. So um, basically, it's a basically it's a Dutch company, uh, so European based. 80 million monthly active users, apparently. So very very powerful. They went through a couple of rounds uh, back in 2000. Well, it was founded, I think, in 2009, something like that. Then in 2015, they had their first big raise, 25 million, and then 35 million a few years later. To scale up the the product, I mean nothing to say. Um, at least each each. I mean everyone listening to this podcast probably have used the, at least once we transfer. So no no question about the value of of the company. Um, their their pricing is basically is interesting because there is like a big freemium sort of a platform, so people can get on board pretty easily and at least get. A, get the, the usability down and people sort of knowing the brand and then they're basically playing it in terms of uh, the amount of uh, file sharing so uh, definitely a big alternative to Dropbox, Dropbox very intuitive very very well crafted uh, so there is like a true value in it I think it's and I'm sure the guys at Bending Spoon are really are really looking into that mm. I was thinking actually Checking out with the, the latest development and the latest packages for, from WeTransfer is that it looks like WeTransfer, the true value of WeTransfer is probably the fact that uh, they want to become the next uh, file sharing slash plus productivity tool in the sense that there are a few very interesting features, especially in the pro plans and in the paid plan for when uh, monetizing, which essentially are, uh, you know, besides the, the, the large amount of files, the idea is really to allow, uh, let's say, agencies or uh, operators to provide portals for their clients. So actually, you can have like a space, a virtual space to upload like big files for clients. And then their clients have the opportunity to actually, you know, review, comment and interact without the necessity of downloading um, anything. So it's kind of tilting toward a productivity tool and that will be a next level. And I'm wondering how exactly Bending Spoon is going to take it from here. You know, Bending Spoon is, as we have talked before, traditionally kind of uh, makes uh, like a big uh, slash in term of uh, cost optimization, both in term of operation and, and people and uh, uh, without really touching the original strategy though. So that's pretty, that might be, that might be the case also here. That's my hot take right now. I don't know, Nick, what, uh, what is your feel on this one? Mm, no, uh, I, I kind of agree with you. So we'll see where, where they take it from here. Uh, I agree and uh, you are spot on on, on, on seeing the, the smart productivity angle uh, in terms of, of the small customer or the, or the professional. Uh, I think one of the um, main products uh, developed by uh, Ben Spoon is actually a, a small profe smart professional productivity tool in the um, image video editing space. Uh, Good point. So th 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 there is a common theme here coming coming, coming up from, from these acquisitions. So um, Absolutely. It might make sense. Uh, I wanted to, so, to, to give some more flavor on, on, on the corporate finance side. Um, 
uh, as we mentioned, they, we just raised a couple of rounds. Uh, and actually in 2022, uh, they were planning to, to go public with an IPO. And they were eyeing a 800-ish million dollars valuation at IPO. Um, of course, we don't know whether this is the right ballpark uh, for, for this acquisition, uh, but it gives some pretty idea of how it was originally expected to be to be, to be valued. Um, so interesting, interesting. I don't expect Ben is supposed to, 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 to be paying it 100 million. Uh, this is a private transaction, so it's probably less. Uh, and it, it is different to, 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 to list a company with that valuation and to acquire a company. Uh, but still, I, I, I don't think it's in a different... Uh, uh, so the, the number of zeros is different or it's much absolutely different. absolutely and given also the amount of equity they raised uh, i mean we don't have any more details about the deal but uh, you know the past sort of big news for bending spoon was raising 155 million in equity financing uh, from durable capital partners uh, bayu gifford cox enterprise nb renaissance nuo capital and startip so uh, that's uh, right now their checkbook, I would say. Uh, plus, of course, you know, they can cut deals of different nature. But when it comes to actually like uh, mere cash, that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the amount. Um, what is interesting is that uh, I think we're seeing definitely a, a definite big transition. Some people would argue that Bending Spoon is not a startup anymore. It's a great success case. And here we can see like an M&A playbook like rolling out. Uh, very systematically. Um, what is interesting is that most of acquisition, if I'm not mistaken, happened this year. So 2024 was really the year when the rollout went full force, I think. Uh, they are at uh, six or seven acquisition, I would say. Uh, a lot of, most of them um, went basically con were concluded this year. So that's, uh, yeah. you know, th good think, things to come. I think Evernote, is the most relevant one not announced this year because yeah. also 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 meetup was from earlier this year yeah uh, yeah and also the other the other one the one that everybody kind of dismissed but it was quite sizable in that ecosystem of apps i don't remember the name now but it was a hefty acquisition uh like yeah. 50 million acquisition something like that but yeah yes you're right so they've been pushing for this strategy all in the, in the, in the last, few, last few months. Hmm. Totally. Very interesting. And in, this, um, in these market conditions, that, that, that is interesting. I mean, uh, apart from the big premiums that we once had in AI, uh, at least uh, if, you do, if you don't look at the, the, the last few days on the, the public markets, uh, outside of yeah, that, that's, uh... outside of that, uh, multiples were not, you know, unbelievable. It's a good, good moment to to purchase, and I think there is a lot of pressure from investors to um, uh, capitalize their investments. So, I mean, you, as you said, we transfer raised funding in 2015. Yeah, and that's seven years ago. So I, I really believe there was some pressure from uh, those early investors to to to, to see their money back. So the, it is a it can be, Yeah, and it can be a good opportunity for them. It's a good like uh, mm. sort of conjunction of uh, positive conditions for people that are very liquid, for companies that are really liquid, you know, uh, mm. investor LPs asking for exit, uh, VC kind of slowing down. Not many companies have the, 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 the dry powder to actually do that. And uh, there you go. You have like amazing deals uh, priced, uh, you know, below what maybe would be like uh, what we like previous valuations and uh, you know you add up all these elements and then bending spoon is, is in a good position to actually play it, their cards really really smartly so that's uh, that's interesting it's a good yeah. point good point yeah, yeah, yeah. now now i only i only my, my only thought is about my bingo card so who's next oh yeah yeah 
I know, I know. I, I was like jokingly, I was, uh, I'm starting checking on Crunchbase, the companies, you know, funded between, you know, 2009 and 2015 to see like what's, uh, what's going to happen. I was, uh, I was thinking of betting on like team viewer, but unfortunately I was checking and team viewer kind of did their own path, but that could have been like another interesting, uh, you know, I'm just thinking of what I was using back in the days, university, as you say, <laughs> that's really, that's really the idea. That's yeah. the um, that's the heuristic. That's the decision investment heuristic used by the people, probably. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, moving on. Let's talk about wise. So um, there has been a lot of talk about brain machine interface uh, tools and uh, hardware. Uh, generally coming from, of course, uh, the big like uh, trend um, started by Neuralink and all the press uh, done by Neuralink. Uh, people forget that in Italy also a few um, great founders are working on uh, um, hardware that actually is, uh, is um, whose mission is to actually uh, revolutionize a bit the, that sector. In particular, WISE, so neurotechnology startup raising 25 million in debt and equity in a round led by Wallaby, which is a family, an Italian family office, uh, with the uh, aid from EIB uh, providing the debt facility. So basically what they're trying to do is uh, working on um, the first iteration of expandable percutaneous lead, which basically means uh, essentially like um, um, hardware that can be easily injected into blood vessels and then they would expand to actually uh, capture uh, signals for the, from the brain and uh, stimulate different like brain uh, areas. So I totally butcher the explanation in terms of science. We're not <laughs> neuroscientists. That's the best I can do right now. But uh, definitely it has, uh, it, it, it definitely like, uh, it's clear how that can be very valuable in terms of uh, usability and, uh, uh, you know, solving some of the major problem in uh, neuroscience like that and in therapy actually. So that's definitely kudos to them, kudos to the team. And uh, that's very, very, that's a big round. That's probably, yes, that was the big, one of the biggest round in Italy for, uh, yeah. for, uh, for from what week, I could yeah. see and find out by, by looking for documentation of the 25 million, there are about 15 million in debt facility by the European investment bank and 10 million in equity. So that's, you know, that should be the, the, the Perfect. Break, break, break down on yeah. the round. So going down this rabbit hole, Nick, I was, uh, I wanted to, you know, bring up on the table a recent inter interview with Elon Musk talking about Neuralink. And uh, as we know, like they've been successfully done a few implants uh, in the brain. So things are moving and these people are definitely seeing something. Um, one interesting element that was brought up was that, you know, um, their idea is to make it as common as possible so people can augment their, uh, their brain capacities. And one interesting take that uh, Elon Musk was like mentioning was that uh, he's not only aiming as, uh, uh, to actually solve some of neurogenerative, uh, neurodegenerative disease or other uh, seizure problems, but was actually to, you know, support that people in actually augment their capacity as the disease were cured. So his argument is that, you know, we need to get uh, the basically the rate of data transfer between, between brain and computer as, uh, as high as possible in a way that actually we can augment, uh, you know, the, a new way of perceiving reality with, you know, thoughts and uh, uh, like a computer interface. So bottom line, the idea is that, uh, which was very interesting. So one of the quotes is that there is an eternity between keystrokes. So basically Elon Musk was saying, look, uh, when we input data into a computer, you know, one second is an eternity. A computer do trillion of operation in a single second. So what if we have a more efficient way to input information so that we can at least uh, go closer and, uh, you know, have, be um, extremely more efficient to, to input. So the quality and the speed of output can actually like reflect that because uh, it's our limitation of input. It's not the computer limitation. So that was like a super fascinating about it. And that's another step toward that. So not just uh, disease, uh, uh, you know, uh, solution, but also augmentation. So big, uh, big topic probably in the next five years. Yeah, I have told you that the is that it's also going beyond the limitation of the output. So we can only 
speak as many words per second, type as many words per second, or, you know, and, and basically that's it, or, or clap as many times per second or whatever. So that's opening up a completely different communication channel with the expectation that that's, that would be multiple times more of higher throughput yeah. than the others are, yeah. the others that we have. Yeah, okay. I mean, um, it was interesting how it kind of simplified the problem. So instead of, well, simplified, it's not simplified, but at least uh, focused the problem of computer brain interface, which is bits per second. So bits per second in, bit per second out. The limitation is our, our input capacity. So I, I thought that was pretty fascinating. So yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. Neuralinks and everything, all the ecosystem is going to create around it. So another win for Elon probably of creating another industry, which is groundbreaking. So this guy, nothing to say, not really, not, no comments on, on that. Moving forward, let's talk about um, quantum computing. So a big problem in quantum computing was essentially a uh, temperature program a problem. So whenever uh, any quantum computing um, basically need to be engineered, uh, the uh, big problem was uh, the extremely high temperatures and the ways uh, basically you solve the problem of like lowering down the temperature of uh, the hardware. Uh, an Italian uh, company, Rotonium, raised 1 million from CDPVC and Oblo basically to focus on single photon qubit uh, quantum processor. The idea here is to actually um, basically get the component to operate at room temperature. So again, very narrow problem. One of the most, ex probably one of the most useful, well, I don't know, maybe one of the most useful uh, kind of uh, issue uh, that if solved, that they can be they can be extremely like groundbreaking in uh, uh, making quantum computing more accessible for for you know uh, general use. I would say so. Very interesting problem, uh, like a, a decent raise for sort of developing like R and D uh, on this problem. So uh, definitely kudos to the team of Rotonium. Very interesting. Hmm. Super interesting. I mean, in a sense, or, we still don't have a, a fully working quantum computer in, 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 you know, in terms of real, real problems scale. I already think at edge computing, and I'm, I'm really fascinated that the idea is coming out of, of, of an Italian team. So nice. So jump starting absolutely. a few steps. So exactly, exactly, nice. getting in the right on the right tracks at least. You mm -hmm. know the. So we, today we can see that, you know, there are people really kind of lasering on certain like problems and going deeper and try to, to solve those problems. So that's definitely a good, uh, a good strategy. Awesome. So uh, let's conclude with a new SGR being launched in Italy. VC Partners uh, announced the first closing of its VC Partner Fund 1 at 65 million. So uh, very interesting because we've been seeing uh, sort of uh, the, uh, the new, a new wave of like um, funds holding companies, uh, bigger and smaller, but definitely there is movement. Um, this is an SGR. Uh, so 65 million is not, uh, is not a joke, it's, it's a decent size for, for a first fund. And uh, it's a good news for the ecosystem. Again, uh, you know, more operators, more capital to be allocated. And uh, the focus here is consumer tech, which is uh, not uh, obvious in the sense that not many Italian fund um, actually uh, focus on this uh, kind of vertical. What is your take yeah. on this? No, I agree with you. Um, many of the latest funds kind of focus on deep tech and or software, in particular B2B software as a service. So models that have been kind of, or in some sense, uh, proven. Uh, Consumer tech was left a little bit behind, from, at least from the latest funds launched in the car last two, three years. So it is interesting to see a different take, uh, and kind of a reasonable one. Um, we do have some verticals where there is probably uh, some specific verticals in the consumer uh, space uh, with uh, very good opportunities to invest in. So, and first time in investors kind of, so, it's the first time um, uh, GPs enter the market, so 
Yeah, new operator. Yes, new operator. That's a good news for the, the ecosystem for sure. Awesome. All right, so that concludes this week's episode of the Week in Italian Startup. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel for more exciting news and stories from the Italian Startup World. Thank you, Nick, for joining us today. And until next time. Thank you, Jack. Take care. Ciao, ciao, everybody. See you next time.